Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to sign uh, unsigned applications on Android and uh, the fact that manually embedding payloads in applications does work as sort of a backdoor. Uh, now, this video is going to be the uh, sort of a continuation to the live stream video that I made just prior to this video. So uh, for those of you who haven't checked it out, I recommend watching the live stream. I essentially covered how to embed uh, MSF Venom payloads uh, or interpreter payloads within uh, legitimate Android applications manually. So not automatically, but actually explaining the process. So many of you actually asked me whether or not that uh, that application will work after I've embedded the payload manually. And indeed, I'll show you that right now. So if you remember where I left off, uh, where I left off, I was in the um, the dist folder in the original application that we decompiled, which was the Google, uh, the Google launcher, the Google now launcher. So what we did is we decompiled it. Uh, and then we all also decompiled uh, the payload that we created with MSF Venom and then we essentially embedded that payload within the decompiled Google Launcher and then we finally recompiled it with APK tool and this was the APK that we were given right over here. Uh, now again I used one of these APK sites to get it and I used the legitimate application just to show you that it will that it will work. Now a disclaimer is that you need to understand embedding payloads uh, within legitimate applications will work to some extent and I'm going to be demonstrating my uh, my experience and this is the first time I'm doing it after a long time or for a few years so uh, I'm also keen on testing the security of uh, Android right now so it should actually tell me that the application is is not safe to install because of the signatures I'll explain signatures in the ne next application when we talk about signing with zip align in this video I'll focus on signing on Android However, this application should install because it is using uh, it is a Google application and I'll explain why that is so uh, it should detect that this is unsafe to install. However, on previous versions of Android, uh, you should be able to get an install without any issue. Uh, what you find nowadays is that uh, is that uh, Google has integrated a scanner. Uh, after you install an application or sideload an application. So it all comes down to what you want to do with the application. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to transfer this on my device uh, via my, I'm just going to set up a quick, uh, I'll just start up the Apache, um, the Apache uh, server here. Serve the Apache to start and we'll copy that to the var www HTML folder. So we'll just say copy and com.google. Yeah or www html and we'll copy it into that directory so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to start up uh, i've already started up so we don't have to waste uh, we don't have to waste time so i've set up our msf console here and all i'll do is i'll use the exploit handler uh, exploit multi-handler and then we'll set the payload and i remember the options appropriately so android uh, meta this is the payload that we had generated and decompiled and embedded within the Google Now Launcher, Meterpreter, uh, and reverse TCP. That's what we used. I'd recommend always using HTTP or HTTPS, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So show options, and then we're going to set the L host here to my uh, to the Kali uh, operating system's IP. And again, a lot of you are asking for port forwarding. Don't worry, they're all coming. I want to cover every bit of it. Uh, 192.168.1.108 and we hit enter set L port uh, sorry L port that was set to port 1234 and uh, we can finally hit run so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up my mobile device now and you should see the screen recording it should come up any moment now so I'm just going to start it up give me a second and uh, I will hit start and I'll open up my web browser and reload my IP, the Kali Linux IP where the web server is running. So you can see 192.168.1.108. So you can see it on the screen now. And if I zoom in, you'll see that particular application here. It's being hosted on a Debian server. So what I'll do is I will run now the listener here, which is going to be a reverse TCP handler running. And or you can see the IP and the port. So I'm not I'm making anything up. So I will click on the application to download it because this is just a simple web server. So you can see it's downloading. I will open up the file here and I'll show you that you can install it. You can install it without signing it. So there we are. The permissions that we had set are already there. So you read call log uh, and these are things that would typically not alert a standard user, especially when you have an application like the Google Now Launcher. You'll pretty much say, well, yeah, a launcher does need this. So I'm just going to hit install and uh, the scanner should come up any moment now. So there we are. It's going to tell you blocked by play protect. 
and I'm just going to hit install anyway. And there we are, Google now. So it's going to scan. This is the default Google scanner. And there you are. So you can see it's going to tell you that the application is safe, which is pretty weird. So I'm just going to open it up here. And immediately we get the interpreter session. And because it's telling me that I have the Poco launcher uh, as my default launcher, you can set the default one. So there we are. You can see that I have the interpreter session. And I'll just, uh, I'll just stop the recording here. And you should have seen that I've stopped it. And now if I just type in sys info, and hit enter and there we are you can see i'm running the latest version of android uh, as for stable release which is android 9 and if i just change into uh, into my directory uh, the sd card directory you can list the files in here you can see all my files here some of them will be blurred for safety and security but there you are that is essentially how to use the interpreter uh, how to essentially manually embed payloads into legitimate applications and how to get them installed and you can see uh, we did get uh, a notification so obfuscation is going to be very important that's something i'm very very keen on doing so i'll be making follow-up videos on that so the last thing that i want to show you guys is you should see my android screen coming up and uh, the thing about the launcher is until the person sets the launcher permanently uh, the interpreter session can also be terminated in case I go back to my default launcher and that's why you need to learn how to set up persistence and that's also a video I'll be making on uh, that's also a video that I'll be working on all right so let's talk about signing applications so on Android uh, if I just start the screen recorder I have a fantastic application here the link will be in the description you can see it's called apk signer it allows you to essentially sign all APKs with uh, with varying key stores that you have. So I have a default key store here. So you can generate your very own key stores. Uh, and uh, if you want to sign an application, I can just hit uh, launch. Sorry about if you saw that advertisement. So you can see in my downloads folder, this is the com Google launcher. If I just select it, it'll tell me where it wants to save uh, the signed APK here. So I'll just hit save. And there we are, it's going to generate a signed APK for you. So for those of you who are modifying other applications or you've embedded other applications that uh, you've embedded payloads in other applications uh, that require signing, then you can also use this application on your Android device to sign it. Now, the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to automatically embed payloads with MSF Venom and a few other tools. Then I'll be showing you how to sign them on Kali Linux. All right. After that, we'll, I'll show you how to set up persistence. And the final video in this series is going to be uh, how to set up port forwarding. All right, so that's pretty much going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or on the forum. And uh, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace, guys.